This demonstration is to break down how we design a center point site. Here we see a center point's design. You also see that this design is mobile and responsive. This is all made possible through the CSS of the site itself. So in the back end of the site, under styles, we have the CSS for this site. Now, you can write your own CSS. You could use Bootstrap. Uh, we provide you with CSS in your center point site. You'll notice that this design may be applied to this site or any number of sites. So sometimes you might want to share a design across numerous sites. Within this site, you can write CSS if you know it, or if you want to be insulated from that knowledge, you can now manage all of the elements like the header of the site or the footer of the site. Here is the background image that you see at the footer of this site for an example. So it's kind of paint by numbers. Uh, how do we change these values so that they dynamically change on the front end like we see here with this background image button color which I'm going to make a hot pink. We now see that all the buttons on the site are now hot pink in color. So basically at a very high level there is the CSS of the site and or sites because of course you could have multiple sites each one of these sites in your family could each have their own design and we can manage those style sheets as we would. Now in addition to the style sheet we then need to concern ourselves with the layout of the pages themselves. So when we're looking up uh, an individual web page or we're looking up a record in a module where we have a big lookup of a lot of different records and we need to bring up this one on sample record how do we lay this out for the title and the start date and the breadcrumb trail and all this information? So in the back end, and this goes beyond just the core site design, we then need to look at the module design. And you'll find under site architecture, module designer, and within that, all of the different modules. Now the module we're looking at here is called generic enhanced A, right here. And this module has a view, first off, you know, that allows us to search by certain things, search by zip code, search by uh, taxonomy, you know. So the search option page is something we call in the module designer view, the home view. And here you will find within this code here, the zip code search, the regional search, the keyword search. So each one of these little fields here, what are called CP scripting uh, objects, are what allow us to define those various searches. So if I just hit uh, that space there, you'll see that that will move around. Now, if I need to view the HTML of this, all of the divs and the classes that address each one of those elements are, you know, found in HTML view. In the top right hand corner, if I click on this question mark, you will see the center point toolbox. Now, what are these things? These are CP scripts like these, but it's a menu so that we can actually drag and drop these items over. For example, if I wanted to bring over this bookmark and put it right there on the page, bookmark this page, there's my bookmark. If I wanted to bring over a breadcrumb trail, we bring over the breadcrumb trail. So these become objects of reference that we can drag and drop over. And later in this demonstration, we'll explain how not only you can manage all of these elements by dragging and dropping them, but we can also create your own custom script. So your code, your Visual Basic code or your web service or whatever it is, we can make your elements part of this gallery. So it's very easy to create new things. So it becomes almost paint by numbers. To better help explain what these CP scripts are, let's take a look I'm right now under design uh, in dynamic scripts is the name of the module and I'm going to create a new example so I'm going to say show me the top 10 news items I'm going to select from my news module which is right here I may even want to filter specific types of news uh, in this case I'm just gonna say give me all top 10 news but I could have said give me only these types of news or those types of news and I'm gonna say let me have 10 of those records in a particular order perhaps most popular, date descending, you know, whatever the case might be. If I wanted to manage the CSS and style of just that little widget or that little dynamic script, I could do that. But for purpose of example, I'm just going to quickly create top 10 news. Here is the script for top 10 news. And as you can see, our top 10 news articles. So you'll find at the bottom, this is one of those CP scripts. Now that CP script, center point scripting, 
is a object of reference and that's what makes CenturyPoint an object-oriented platform. For example, if I go and create a web page and just paste my CP script right in the page and say top 10 news, well now when I submit this to the site, I've created top 10 news and here's my top 10 news. So you can imagine that a lot of your pages are serving dynamic content you know, on one page we might show the top news, top events, top employee, you know, all these different things happening. So these objects are very important for you to be able to manage that uh, over and over again. Additionally, if you ever went back to that, uh, the rules over that object, and I'll go back to my top 10 news records and I'll say, look, I, instead I want the top three news, and I'm going to change that number to three. Now when I refresh my page, we will have or should have three news articles as we see here. So the objects are very intelligent. They're also intelligent enough to know if I've placed this script on multiple sites, it knows to filter only the top three news of this site or that site or this site. So they're very intelligent uh, so that now we only need to use one reference or one object across multiple sites and it knows to filter that information out. Another example I'd like to use is this one right here, where we're looking at uh, a jQuery embed file, meaning you might have some feature or function that you would like to add to CenterPoint, like this one here, wherever you want a dialog box to open, you want it to open up with this kind of a view here in this little pop-up box. Okay? There's a lot of different jQuery uh, effects and features that you might want to include. You might want to manage things like uh, charts, graphs, you might want to manage uh, sliders, carousels, you know, these are the various visual effects that you might like for your site and you might want to add those to uh, the site that you have. Here we have accordion pages or reports. So there's a lot of nice fanciful ways to, in which to provide new style uh, references to your website. We want to explain how to do that. So when we go back to the back end of the uh, website, Let's go into that page that managed that dialog box and found under the examples, we see the page that we've set up for jQuery dialog box. And here is the page for that. And we simply have a link here. It says click here to open dialog. And here's the HTML, just so you can see the view here. Now the effect for that, in this case, was managed in the header tags of the individual page. So in this case, we're saying, for this individual web page, we would like to invoke this jQuery effect only, only in this page. And that may also even reference some larger jQuery theme. So you may have uploaded an entire theme that manages all of your things, you know, the pop-up boxes, the tabs, the this, that, and the other. So if you were uploading a theme, which oftentimes clients do, under design, we have a jQuery UI themes that allows to upload various themes that you might find. And these are different, think of them as style palettes that you're referring to when using any of these jQuery references. So that inclusion within the header tag of that individual page will allow that to occur only within that singular page. Now, if you wanted to add that to the entire site, you would go to the header tags for that audience and you would instead drop in the scripts there so that any time a dialog box is referenced anywhere within your site, you are guaranteed to know that it will reference on a global scale that jQuery reference or JavaScript reference, whatever information you might want. And also there is where we would manage uh, site statistics and tracking tools and things like that because it's something we want to have on every page within an individual site. So again, CP scripts are simply our name to create a label so that we can now copy and paste and, and move these elements around. So those are the objects in that object-oriented manner. Sometimes those objects can get very deep, where, for example, we may wish to show a live chart. Maybe that's a chart to show data from another database, maybe your back-end system. Maybe we want to see the reporting of a certain function happening on your site. You know, how many people have signed up for this or how many people have signed up for that. And in this case, this is where we start getting into more uh, complex development tools that want, we want to show live reporting. Uh, and again, this is again a CP script that we're creating here. 
but the data sources found in the design are a little bit different. In this case, we're asking the database for a certain set of information, and we're outputting it, again, referencing that jQuery effect or raw HTML, or maybe we're calling to Google to render a map around those values. And a data source allows a lot of different features here uh, to do that. And let me just create a quick data source to show you. Okay. Let's say I want to create a carousel of doctors. So I want to feature a number of our doctors. Now, to, to summon that information from the database would normally be rather complex. I may say, uh, you know, I might need to write SQL. Well, here I've clicked it on Select Command Builder, right here. And I've selected from my menu, in this case, physician directory. So I want all the physicians. Now, likely I don't need all of these fields to create a carousel. So I can cherry pick, you know, which fields I need or don't need. For the purpose of demonstration, I'm just going to select this entire SQL statement and paste it right there. So it's saying, bring me back all of my doctors in this data call. Now, in the output, I would like to create a carousel perhaps a two-dimensional carousel, and I'd like the width of that to be 980 pixels wide. I would like the width of those images to be 200 pixels wide, and the height to be 400 pixels wide. The name of the image that I'm using for my doctors is called photo. Now, I just happen to know that, but you would go to your module and find the image name to render that. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a new instance of a data source, carousel of doctors, I've just saved the record. Here is our record right here, Carousel of Doctors. Let's take a look at it. And I now have that Carousel of Doctors without knowing any code. So this means that I'm able to invoke that jQuery function or fanciful technique, and it's now created an object for me, someone who does not know how to do any development. I'm then going to go and put that on a web page somewhere. I'll call this my Carousel Doctors and I will put that page here on the contact us section. And again, returning to the site, let's uh, refresh the page. We'll go to our carousel page and under carousel of doctors, right here, carousel doctors, we see our carousel page and it's functional and it's working. So that's when we talk about embedding features and functions that you want to, we want to make it easy for you to manage that type of information so that it becomes reusable. And anywhere where I want to show this carousel of doctors is now something that I can call to many times. I only need access to that object or that element, which we, we call a CP script. Now, when designing a module, designing a website, we have that toolbox. And that toolbox, as I mentioned earlier, allows us to drag and drop. So basically, when you have a lot of CP scripts, you might want to have those live within a library so that you can very easily get to those. And that's what you see when you click on this small question mark over here. And by the way, that works this way in just about every module, where we have all of our popular CP scripts that we call to all the time. So I could have very easily taken that physician carousel and made it a part of this menu here uh, so that you know whenever I need the carousel, it's right there at, uh, at arm's reach and I can just drag and drop that thing right over. Uh, it'll also give you a little visual as you bring it over. So it's a very visual interface that says, yes, I would like to add Google Maps, you know, right there or right here. So this allows us to bring that over. What we want to talk about next is how do you create these so that your own code lives in this reusable uh, toolbox or gallery so that you can reuse it whenever you want. So the first thing you want to do is to navigate uh, to oxion.com forward slash SDK. And from my CP scripting, the my CP scripting development section, you want to download the my CP scripting template file. Now, what you'll do is you'll unzip this file and move the my underscore CP scripting dot CS file to the app underscore code directory of your website. So for most developers, they'll know what we're doing here, but we want to make sure that that lives under the app code directory. So from the My SDK page, add custom code to toolbox section, download My Hello World script template. So you want to unzip that file and move the My Files folder into the website 
known as the Console Script Builder Attributes Directory. In Visual Studio, for that website, open up the app code directory and click on mycpscripting.cs. So you want to open up that file. And in Visual Studio Project for that website, you want to open up uh, under console forward slash script builder forward slash attributes forward slash my files and click on the scripting.myhelloworld.xml. If you look in both of those files, you'll see that mycpscripting.cs, we have a method called my hello world and our configuration is named the same with the prefix of scripting and the method named after scripting dot my hello world also in the xml configuration uh, in the cp dat underscore default value uh, we have scripting with the key of our method name in my cp scripting dot cs file so basically what we're adding here and what happens in that config file go hand in hand you want to navigate to your client console. You want to click on uh, development and then on the keyword list. And then what you want to do is you want to search for toolbox, click on toolbox group, enter the new keyword value of whatever you want to call it. This will be the name that you find in the toolbox. You know, that'll be the section header in the toolbox. that will group all of your things. And we're going to click add um, and click the add button to the right and then save it at the bottom there. The same value uh, of the keyword is used in the cp dat underscore toolbox group property of the scripting my hello world xml file so this would put the new script under that new group in the console you would then navigate to the new navigation page or to an existing page where you want to use this new script you'll then click on that record or click the new button click on the help icon in the top right and then under my custom group in the toolbox, you'll see your new My Hello World script. Simply drag the script into the editor and make the appropriate selections of your script, you know, which are based on the properties of your XML config file, and click select. The script would be pasted into the editor when you have saved the record so that you can navigate to the front end of the website and see that script working there. So now that your new tool is built into the toolbox, we can now simply drag and drop it. We can bring it in numerous times. Whenever we need to call to that function or that element, it now lives in the toolbox in line with the rest of the Central Point tool. So in essence, what we want to do is build a gallery of different things that you have access to at all times that you can simply summon and call to on the page in which to render your own tools. So it's your tools and kind of our tools working together to allow you that object-oriented control to develop and assemble whatever you need.